There you are. Yes. And I understand, Mr. Mobley, that you are going to, uh, that you have filed for uh, uh, consideration on re-election. Oh, I have not filed, but I am giving serious consideration to that. Mm. Oh, good. Not yet tired of the company I've been keeping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> at, last, at least you're still considering it then. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, we were just talking about that before you came on, and that is that what I love about this board is it's objective, thoughtful people who look at data, and and even though they may have a strong opinion one way or another, they they sort of just go with the flow and, and think it out further before they finally commit. And that's that's what we're supposed to do. Yes, well, they have collectively done a great deal before arriving at this position and the responsibility inherent in keeping Sun River, Sun River. Yep. So we are blessed. Yeah, we really are. We really are. And hopefully whoever applies, I'm gonna make a little, uh, oh, I guess we better get started here. We're t I'm talking too much, I'm sorry, James. <laughs> Are you ready? Ready. I'm sorry, sir. Yes? Yes, we're ready. Okay, we're live. All right, well, good morning. Uh, my name is Brad Skinner. Uh, I'm the chairman of this board or president, I guess they call it. But we um, but, uh, really wanna welcome each of you to this board meeting of the Sun River Homeowners Association. We had a, more, uh, a work session yesterday and the work session really just allows us to talk out issues that are either on today's agenda or a future agenda like Marches or Aprils, so that we understand better the data and, uh, and the, uh, the thoughts that various people are providing. Now, before we start the meeting, I wanna make a commercial. On March 19th, uh, we have a deadline uh, under our governance documents for folks, uh, owners, owners, not folks, owners, that would like to be a member of this board to file and uh, express that interest. So I really do hope uh, those of you who are interested in the sustainability and resilience of Sun River will truly consider running for this board. Uh, I was just, we just had a conversation before we went live, just how much in a way fun this board is in that you're able to work with thoughtful and creative people who really care about the community and who are attempting to weigh all of the various conflicting sometimes and sometimes aligned issues that make Sun River a, a great place to live. So I really do encourage you. Uh, it's, it's, it's not that big of a burden. It's uh, one Friday morning, one Saturday morning per month. Uh, and in the process, we just really talk about policy issues that can then be implemented by staff or with our partners at the state or county or federal government. So uh, really encourage you to run. Uh, again, it, 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 when we do talk about policies, uh, we had a good conversation yesterday about the recycling center. I don't know where that's gonna end up in terms of recommendations. Could be multiple recommendations, could be public, could be private, it could be other, we could wait a while. All of that will be discussed in our March meeting. Uh, but it, but we, we try to get people data to think about things so that we're better prepared when we actually have to make decisions. Again, I really encourage any of you who are interested in the future of Sun River to run. March 19th is the deadline and James will be happy or Becky will be happy to take your applications or Lawrence, uh, the head of our nominating committee, right? Yeah. And those uh, telephone numbers will be in my March scene letter. So please, please follow up. Anyway, so... Um, as you all know, I, I think our purpose Need of to our take board, the role. Oh, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I, I just <laughs> want right. to do that. And then I'm going to, you know, <laughs> there, there is a logic, maybe not perfect, but anyway. So, you know, our, our function is to maintain Sun River as a premier residential and resort community, protecting and enhancing its quality of life, natural environment, and property values. And uh, that's our mission. And that's what we try to focus on consistently. Um, since this meeting is being recorded, uh, I need to call a roll and I will not forget to include staff this time. So if we could start, uh, if you will just, uh, let me know you're here. Director Beenan. Here. Director Burke. Here. Director Gillies. Here. Director Goki. Here. Director Mobley. Here, sir. Director Murray. Excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Director Peterson. Here. 
Director Schmidt. Here. And I'm here, Brad Skinner. So um, the first order of staff. Uh, oh, and staff and staff. <laughs> yes, I did it again. Who's in the staff room this morning? James is here. Susan. And Jesus. Three of us. Okay, Susan, Jesus, and James. Very good. Okay, so our first order of business uh, is always to listen uh, to owners who uh, choose to talk to the board uh, on issues current or future, and uh, we'll start with that. Do we have anyone in the queue, James? We have two right now. We have Cindy McCabe who's on. Okay. So Cindy, if you're listening, you're up right now. Cindy, you're sure. currently on mute. There you go. Mm -hmm. Take it off, yeah, again. Cindy, you're on mute. There you there go. go. Okay, okay. I, I, I had to do it twice. Can you hear me? Absolutely. You can, you can hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, all right. All right, well, thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak again this morning. I just wanted to again say thanks for the efforts with Mary McKellen Park and um, the proposed uh, improvements to continue this year. I had one concern after the meeting yesterday that I wanted to bring up, and that is um, using the compressed aggregate for the um, pathway loop. <clears throat> Excuse me, I realize that's going to be, there's, there's obviously a cost difference there, and because you have so much on the schedule for Mary McKellen Park improvements, I realized that there would probably be a savings. But my question is whether or not the um, owners in Sun River, it, if this type of pathway would meet their expectations for a standard pathway in Sun River, because so many, because as far as I know, all the rest of the pathways are paved and smooth and would be uh, a more I think would be thought of as being more amenable to the uh, to the access for people with a mobility issue. So I just wanted to just mention that. Um, and I believe that uh, Mark said something about the pathways could be improved later if that turned out to be a problem. My other um, comment is was regarding the North Pool signage. Uh, I thought Mark, made, Mark Smith made a good suggestion about changing the signage. Um, and Brad said, well, what kind of problems have we had in the past? Well, I think that we need to consider that we don't, we have a, a very, we have a very attractive facility now. We will have when it's finished. And many people on the pathways, on the bike pathways and walking pathways will view this facility and we'll be excited about finding out if they can, when, when it's open and when they can go. So probably uh, a, a good idea would be to somehow incorporate the word owners into the name of the new facility so that that's pretty clear that you have to be an owner and you have to have access to, to, have access to it. And that's all I wanted to say today. Thank you for letting me speak. Hey, Cindy, thank you so much. Those are all good suggestions and we will continue to, to mull them over. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do we have another caller, James? Yeah, we have two more. Uh, the okay. next one is uh, the phone number is 541-388-1329. 388-1329, you're on right now. So you can unmute. A caller. Um, I, I, don't one, three, I, eight, I don't know. If, one, three, I don't nine. know if you. I don't know if you've done this before. There's a, a little bar at the bottom of your your screen. I think if it's a zoom, yeah, and it sorry. says mute or unmute. If you move your mouse to the bottom of the screen, the left hand yeah. corner, you'll see it. A mute phone. designator. Okay. Somebody raised. Okay. Somebody just raised a hand. I don't know who, but. Um. Let's come back to this caller. Uh, can we take the next one, James? And the next one, I think it's uh, Ed Patera. Ed? Okay. I see Ed in the uh, description, yes. Mr. Patera, you also are on mute at the moment. Hello, Ed? 
you need to unmute and you're up for comments. Okay. Um, okay, so we're having trouble. Um, can I, I don't know. It's not on our end. I know, I, I, I understand that. Um, so again, I would like to hear from, the board would like to hear from all of you, who the two of you who are on mute, uh, perhaps send an email. Um, again, uh, the discussion topic, uh, Ed, that we discussed yesterday is a long ways to go. Uh, it's not gonna be brought up uh, until work session and actual session next week, uh, next <laughs> month rather. And so, um, and then once we figure out <laughs> what we're recommending, it's going to have to go to the owners, whether it's a private, public, or whatever facility, or if we need more time. So there's plenty of opportunity to work these issues, but I'm sorry uh, we're not, for whatever reason, being able to connect. But please, yes. Uh, yes? We have one other, one other caller that... Um, okay. And, and the okay. phone number is 541-270-1313, 541-270-1313. Five, you are up for comment right now. And you're on Again, mute. we're on mute, please. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't know what's happening here. If we have a some sort of system glitch, or I think Bina and I get on this. <laughs> it's obviously a band broadband yeah. issue. <clears throat> <laughs> While we're waiting, I, I did have a suggestion for the name of the North Pool. We could call it SOAK, S-O-A-K, Sun River Owners Aquatic Center. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, again, callers, I don't know why we can't communicate with you, but please send an email to James, who can disseminate it to the board. Uh, if the topics are related to the recycling center, we're going to have plenty of time to work these issues further. Uh, I have no idea what the outcome is based on the discussion yesterday. Some boards members felt this, some board members felt that, and uh, we're going to give it a lot more work. And then eventually it's got to go to the owners one way or another, uh, either six months from now, eight months from now, or tomorrow. So whatever, uh, there's going to be plenty of room for discussion. And, and that's, of course, important so that we come to the best conclusions. Okay, uh, Keith, yes. Would it be possible to offer a telephone number for those who have not been able to Zoom in for the future? Uh, for the future, I think, you know, I think that's great. Uh, okay. James, can, I don't know. Uh, let's, let's come up with a solution because uh, it's very frustrating, I'm sure, to the caller as well as to us to not be able to hear uh, opinions. Sometimes we uh, have folks that just want to attend. We've had folks that attend this way and, and then don't talk. But I think we know Mr. Patera wanted to speak. So I, I, we're on our end, we can't find any reason why they cannot <clears throat> join the meeting. So, well, if they're using an iPad, they might just try and tap the screen up at the top to get that drop down that does have the mute button. Yeah, they're they're doing this via phone into the okay. Phoning into okay. The okay, so we need to uh, would you, James, would you please and ask Susan if it's possible, maybe some little how to do this in this in the scene, yeah. uh, you know, how to just think about everything that can go wrong or just just to find out how to unmute when you're on the phone. Right. OK, and, and it's not That's a way. Good. Jesus can't do something to unmute them. Oh, on our, no. our, we're doing everything that, yeah. We, right. We, have no block we know what to tell them to hit this button or to do this. That would also work if we just knew what to right. tell them to do. Okay. So I'm going to move on with the agenda if that's acceptable to everybody at this point. Okay. Um, so the, the next item on the agenda is the owner's forum follow-up from our previous month. Uh, we had uh, uh, three different persons uh, speaking with us, both at the work session as well as as the uh, the regular meeting. Uh, Cindy McCain uh, brought up the issue of uh, hoping we would do something with Mary McCallum Park and move in, in positive directions. 
And she again reinforced that today. Uh, and we will continue to, to listen and think about all of that. And we will also discuss it during a town hall meeting on March 15th. Um, she also brought up this issue of dust. This is the road that, that connects with, uh, I think it's East Cascade uh, and down to the boat ramp where they pull people out. Uh, it's a forest service road which is really fun to try to get any change on. And two, uh, the, the resort uses that for transit. And the resort is uh, in an agreement with us, of course, uh, runs vehicles. And because of COVID, they've had to run more vehicles because they can't back people into their traditional van. So instead, they've gotten school buses and did that last summer. So the dust issue is uh, an issue. Of, it's probably for the last thousand feet of that road. Uh, James and, and Mark are thinking about possible ways to uh, remediate that problem. We'll continue to focus on it. And the, the last issue from yesterday or from the previous meeting uh, had to do with the river uh, and egress and uh, access to the river at Harper Bridge and uh, just how we're going to control uh, folks that, uh, in Cindy's words, even yesterday, uh, would prefer to le relieve themselves on Sun River owner's property uh, coming out of the river. So anyway, there's a multitude of interesting issues that's going to require additional signage. And as you know, we're dealing with um, the whole Cardinal Landing neighborhood and, and try attempting to meet uh, their expectations. Uh, Marilyn Johnson brought up uh, a issue that she and her husband have noticed between uh, circle three and four. James is aware of this. Mark's looking at it. Some additional signage that perhaps discourages uh, bike riding with children, with infants on our roadway. Um, anyway, because of the tunnel, it's difficult for some folks to, to maneuver through. Scott Brucker, um, uh, at our regular meeting talked about the importance of being part of a design manual uh, update, uh, setting standards and setting uh, uh, a direction for remodels and for the future of Sun River, but doing so in the design manual. So we leave less interpretation open um, for, for an appeals board or for, or for the courts. So let's be very specific what we're looking for. And, and uh, Scott has volunteered to be part of that process along with several other owners, which uh, we can discuss more in the March and April meetings. Uh, so those were the owner forums comments that I have from the previous uh, month. Uh, from the board session yesterday, which is the third item on our agenda, I think we had uh, <coughs> a per, some pretty good updates on uh, what's happening with the Rural Education and Compliance Task Force. We had some more routine information about how COVID is helping us to, uh, COVID changes are helping us to have some limited but safe access to the shark facilities. Uh, Director Bunin talked about the telecommunications process, which is ongoing, and some of the issues that, that need to be resolved there uh, with Ben Broadband or other options. Um, uh, the Natural Resource Department talked about the ladder fuel, how we're going to be looking at that plan, updating it, making certain we're adhering to the most uh, recent science and, uh, and other ways to work with our partners to mitigate uh, fire uh, risk in Sun River. Uh, we had an update on the Mary McCallum Park and on the tennis courts and pickleball courts. Um, and then we spent a, a good amount of time on uh, the recycle uh, task force recommendations. And as I said earlier, uh, we got them all those things over. I, uh, some people had some, some opinions one way and another. Uh, some wanted to uh, support the recommendations of the uh, task force in terms of taking more time. So again, we're going to deal with this in our March meeting. Uh, and just again, think it over what makes the most sense. Remembering ultimately the owners will be involved because it will involve either us committing funds that would be repaid to us through a public option or, or uh, through a private option through some court, sort of owner assessment. So uh, we'll, we'll see where we go, but I think there's plenty of room for a lively discussion and conclusion that makes sense for Sun River. We also had a second reading a discussion about uh, the uh, e-bikes too. Are they called e-bikes too? Uh, is that right? Um, and uh, yeah, and so we're, uh, I, th I think we've concluded uh, all 
had a position on that. We looked at the pros and cons, had a very good, again, uh, fact oriented, as well as other considerations that uh, people feel that are important. So generally, I think we had a very good meeting and it's reflective of the kind of meeting that I, I think we should always have. And that is people are thinking, uh, they're assessing data, they're coming to their conclusions objectively and, and, uh, and that's and doing hopefully the best thing we can for Sun River. So that's a recap from my perspective on the, the work session. Is there anybody else that I've, anything I've missed that anybody wants to add that's pertinent to, uh, to our thinking? Okay, so we're into that exciting fourth item, uh, which uh, involves the approval of our board minutes for January 15th and 16th sessions. So if you will turn to me, with me rather, <laughs> to the, uh, the, the first section, of course, uh, if we could look at the January 15th uh, work session, are there any additions or corrections to that text? Yeah, Brad, on uh, yes, Bill. page five, the section uh, Sun River Rules and Regs, I think yes. that uh, the Recycle Task Force update shouldn't be included on that. That should be stricken. I, I'm sorry, that pa page five, yeah, page five, I see it. Yeah, um, it's unless I'm mis misreading this, uh, the rules and regs reading. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, uh, is, is there anything else? Just the title, right? Yeah, yeah. striking okay. the recycle task force. But, yeah, okay, good. All right, uh, Jackie, you've got that. Well, I'm just. Hold on, on page, yeah, page on, five. On, yeah, after page. the word, re, yeah, after the word sections, just scratch recycle task force update. Yeah. Okay, any other uh, additions or modifications to the uh, to the minutes of January fifteenth? Seeing none, uh, could someone provide me with a motion for adoption of these these minutes? So moved. moved. Okay, we had Goki and Burke. Uh, let's call one of them a second. All right. Uh, so, Jackie, you've got that. Goki, Goki and, and Burke. Okay. okay, all in favor of the adopting these minutes uh, as final, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Seeing none, uh, carries unanimously. Okay, then let's move on to uh, January 16th, the next day, our regular board session. And... Um, are there any modifications or corrections to those minutes? Oh, okay. Seeing none, uh, can I have a motion for adoption of these minutes? Director Mobley moves approval of the minutes of January 16, 2021. All right. Peterson, oh. Director Peterson. Uh, Mobley and was that Peterson or was that uh, uh, Beanan? Uh, one of the two. <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> Pick one. Yeah. I picked Peterson because I. Okay. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good. So we have Mobley and Peterson. Um, we have then a, a motion. Uh, All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, it carries unanimously. All right. So let's keep moving on our next item on the agenda. Um, at this point, uh, let's have, we'd like a financial report update. Uh, Director Beenan, are you leading that or a member of staff? Yeah, I'm going to lead that. Okay. So we're in section two. And if you're looking at uh, page 18 uh, is the motion. Uh, but uh, and then page 19 says December 2020. And then uh, page 20 says, uh, is Joe's memo. So just <clears throat> to set the stage here, uh, we are reviewing and approving the unaudited financials for all of 2020. And then uh, we will also take a look at the financials for January of 2021. So for 2020, I don't wanna spend a lot of time on that. I think we've talked about that quite a bit. Uh, if you go to page 21, which is the income statement, uh, you can see that we came in about uh, 
uh, in terms of overall revenue, we came in about $2 million under plan, to about $2.1 million under plan. Uh, that was mitigated uh, to a large extent by expenses coming in uh, $1.2 million under plan, uh, resulting in an overall deficit for the year of just under $900,000, okay? So that's pretty much uh, consistent what we've been talking about for the last several months. Uh, if you go to the balance sheet, in fact, you go to the, the liabilities, uh, I just want to point out one thing uh, because uh, even though we came in at uh, you know <clears throat> about $1.1 million under plan overall from an income perspective, if you go to the second to last or third to last line on the liabilities of the balance sheet, there's a line item called retained earnings. Uh, and then below that surplus deficit for current year. Uh, this is page 24. And you can see that our surplus for the year was $880,982. And so uh, I just wanna point this out that, you know, again, from an income loss perspective, our income came in less than our expenses. So our expenses were higher than our income. We had a loss, but at the same point in time, uh, the net worth of SROA went up by $880,000. And so uh, <clears throat> we can absorb that loss. We are still in a very strong financial position. Uh, we were still able to add to the value of Sun River uh, despite that loss. So that's kind of the, the sum of the 2020 uh, financials. And you can see there's uh, a whole series of reports uh, for each of the various different cost centers that follows that. If anybody has a question, I can answer questions. Uh, but if not, I would uh, proceed to um, ask for a motion to approve the 2020 unaudited financials. Uh, I might go if you would move, we approve it. It's been moved. Do, do we have a second? Seconded, Director Peterson. Director Peterson, second. Uh, so it's been moved and seconded in to accept the unaudited financial statements for 2020. And we have also reviewed the unaudited for 21. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, someone, uh, if you are moving your mouse or whatever, please put yourself on uh, mute. Jackie, are you there? I am here, but somehow I lost the picture, so I might go off and come back on again. Okay, so so you can't. Uh, it, I, could you hit the bottom of your screen on video or? Well, right now I'm. Okay. It got. It got. I, I I will leave and then start over again. I'll be right back on. All right. Very good. Very good. I'm All getting right. much better at this technology thing here. I. I've noticed that, Goki, and you were here very early. I was very impressed. I figured if I was a bit late okay. last meeting, I should be a little early this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, did you get the last uh, motion and uh, second? Yes. Okay. Very. It was Goki and Peterson. Very good. Right. All right. So those uh, 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 that item has been resolved. We're moving on to the next item on the agenda, and we have a series here that are fairly routine. Uh, well, but well, hang, hang on, Brad. We should really go over. Oh, I'm sorry. January financial. I, I'm sorry. Okay. And, and we have a couple of capital transfers that we have to approve too. You know, excellent. <laughs> All right, continue, uh, director. All right. So uh, now on page 54, January 2021, um, and then there's a memo from Joe Healy, and then beyond that there is the normal income statement. Um, I want to point something out here before we get started, and that is that uh, one of the members of the Finance Committee <clears throat> brought up an issue about the way we compute the variance in the variance column. And <clears throat> what we have been doing in the past is the variance was just always the arithmetic difference between actual and budget. So if the actual is higher than budget, it was a positive number. If the actual is lower than budget, it was a negative number. And that's a perfectly, perfectly acceptable way of doing it. <clears throat> but accountants 
tend to do things a little bit differently. <laughs> and what accountants like to do is say, you know, positive numbers are good things and negative numbers are bad things. And so they change the variance equation. Uh, the variance equation in terms of revenue remains the same, actual minus budget, but the variance equation for expenses is the opposite. It's budget minus actual. And the net positive about that is, as I mentioned earlier, if you see a positive number, it's a good thing. If you see a negative number, it's a bad thing. And so uh, I, you know, this came up by one of our members, Joe and I had a conversation about it. Uh, and I told Joe, I says, you know, if this is your report, you decide how you want it done. And Joe decided to go with the way that accountants tend to do it. So it is different. So what we just looked at in for 2020 and what we're looking at here in January is different. And so I just wanna make sure people are aware of that. Um, but like I said, <clears throat> the way of looking at these statements now, when you look in the variance column, a positive number is a good thing, a negative number is a bad thing, okay? So if you look at, <clears throat> for the current month's uh, revenue, minus $47,924 in the variance column, that means that we revenue came in uh, $47,974 below plan. Uh, <clears throat> and if you go down to the total expenses, you see total expenses came in uh, $89,556. It's a positive number. So that it means it actually came in below budget uh, and it's a good thing. So those two things are somewhat offsetting. And so uh, the net result is the operating budget of $41,582 as a variance. That's a positive number. That means that we are at a surplus with respect to what our plan was, all right? Looking at some of the various different details, you can see under program revenue back near the top came in at $47,000 under plan. And again, that was primarily because Shark was closed. Uh, RPPs are trending more or less with the, the way they were last year. They're a little bit behind, not a lot behind. Uh, MPPs are way behind. And so MPPs are our big challenge right now. And as was mentioned yesterday, part of that's because people tend to renew when they go to Shark. And since Shark was closed, they can't go in and renew. And so we're, we're hoping that will improve and as I mentioned yesterday, we really need to do a whole lot better this year. Uh, <clears throat> when you look at department expenses, you can see most of them were under plan. Uh, salaries were under by $23,000 and burdened by about $2,000. And again, this was because Shark was closed and so we uh, did not have the full staff on board. Uh, materials and services were under by $56,000. This is in part due to timing as the uh, invoices come in. Uh, a lot of them didn't come in by the end of the month and so, or before Joe closed. And so uh, some of this will carry over into future months, uh, but some of it is actual real savings too. Uh, for example, <clears throat> chemicals and things like that associated with the pool uh, were below what we had actually budgeted for because the pool was closed. Uh, another one that uh, you know catches my eye right away is insurance and legal, uh, $12,501 below plan. Uh, and that was because the invoice didn't come in. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but the invoice did, I, I, I did end up signing the check earlier this week. I think it was for around $10,000. And so it's pretty much on plan. So uh, that's a good thing. And as I mentioned in, Total, we're about $41,500 uh, better to plan at the end of January. So we're still in pretty good shape starting the year off. Uh, and as I mentioned yesterday, you know, the plan this year is pretty much assuming uh, that Shark is going to be at limited capacity almost through uh, the end of the third quarter. And so uh, if things get better than that, uh, we should be able to do better than that. And uh, <clears throat> as, as I mentioned yesterday, we need to really put a focus on uh, MPPs. Uh, I put a pitch in my treasurer's column uh, for the, uh, the March scene, and I'm hoping that we can continue to, um, you know, put a lot of emphasis on uh, the North Pool or whatever we end up calling it, because uh, we really need to drive more people to uh, sign up for the MPP. 
Going to the balance sheet, uh, this is page uh, 59. Um, you can see that uh, total cash and investments is up by 2.7 million. Uh, this is again, because a lot of the cash comes in at this point of the year. And so uh, people are paying their assessments, uh, people are signing up for RPPs and stuff like that. Uh, so a cash balance of $14.7 million, we're in great shape, no problems there. Uh, most of the other uh, issues on the balance sheet, on the asset side of the balance sheet, are just basically the uh, puts and takes of the normal accounting process. Uh, and so uh, there's nothing there of any significance that should be of concern to anybody. Uh, but you can see at the bottom line, total assets just under $36 million. Going on to liabilities, uh, liabilities in general tend to be a relatively small portion of our total um, <clears throat> net worth. And so, and again, there's very little change in terms of liabilities uh, with the exception that the deferred revenue has gone up by $2.6 million. And a lot of that has to do with the annual assessments that have come in uh, in January. Uh, and you can see also some of the MPP and RPP. And again, when those assessments, MPP and RPP come in, uh, Joe put, puts them in a deferred revenue account and then divides that, uh, the total by 12. And on a one, once, <clears throat> every month, about a 12th of that revenue is recognized. And so he smooths it out, uh, that revenue throughout the course of the total year. And you can see again, my, one of my favorite lines, surplus deficit for the current year, uh, the net worth of SROA has gone up by just a little bit more than $157,000 in the month of January. So again, strong financial position, everything's going uh, quite well. Uh, if you go on to the cash balance sheet, uh, one of the things you'll see is that uh, we have a fair bit of money in uh, the money market we also have quite a bit of money in our checking and cash account. And this money will be transitioning into either the CEDARS uh, portion uh, of the pie. And again, the CEDARS are these um, laddered CDs that we get through First Interstate Bank or into the investment portion of the pie. And what we do with the investment portion is primarily is treasury bills, US treasury bills. And so, uh, Joe, at this point in time, is as, as the money comes in, as he mentioned yesterday, uh, or at the finance committee, when the money comes in, get, get it into the bank as quick as possible. And then uh, after you know, things calm down a little bit, you'll start migrating that money into uh, our various different investment vehicles. Um, we also had a conversation with the First Interstate Wealth Management at our finance committee meeting. And, uh, you know, again, the, the situation is not very promising. Uh, right now, interest rates are on the order of about 20 basis points, which is, you know, that's effectively 0.2%. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and so uh, we're not going to see a huge return on our investments. Uh, and their projection is that that's probably going to stay that way for the next couple of years. And so um, uh, we have a limited set of vehicles we can invest in essentially US treasuries and CDs, uh, because we have a limited set of vehicles we can invest in and those vehicles all have very low interest rates right now, we are not going to see a lot of return on our investment. In fact, right now, we're not even really covering, we're, we're just basically covering uh, the cost associated with using our investment bankers. And so it's pretty much a wash at this point in time. Uh, but we are preserving capital. We are preserving principal. Uh, and then on to the revenue details and uh, expense details. No big surprises there. Uh, all that is pretty much as expected. You can see in the revenue side, it's the uh, programs and fees and the RPP are the ones that came in significantly negative. Uh, and then on the expense side, uh, most of the expense categories are positive. Uh, because, of, as I mentioned before, some of the, the, um, the invoices have come in late, and then also because of um, the shark being closed, some of the issues, some, some of the uh, accounts have not been, um, the expenses have not been as big as what we had planned. So that pretty much covers the finances for the month of January. Any questions on that? 
it'd be nice to see COVID uh, go away at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? I, I have uh, two capital transfers. They must be later in the agenda. Is that correct? Because I don't see them yes. at that. Yeah. Okay. What? Okay. Uh, do, we need, so, do we need a motion to approve the January? Yeah, we do need a motion to approve January's. So moved, Director uh, Peterson. All right. Thanks, Clark. I'll second it. Okay, so we have uh, Clark Peterson and Jared uh, Beenan. Do we have those, uh, Jackie, marked yes. down? Okay, so we have a motion to accept the uh, January 2021 unaudited financial statements. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries unanimously. All right. Uh, the next item on our agenda is tab three of your book, um, and that is... Uh, the general manager's report. So uh, General Manager Lewis, will you uh, proceed? Well, um, and it is in writing before you. And I will just note that, you know, you got extensive updates on uh, from a lot of the departments and what they've been working on. We have a lot of task force going right now and work groups going right now. So I'm not gonna be repetitive to what you heard yesterday, but if there's anything you have a specific question on, interrupt me and ask. Um, so from the administration end of things, Again, as you heard from Stephen Stanfield yesterday, we still have the ever-changing COVID rules. So we continue to monitor that on a daily basis and respond both from a financial aspect to a staffing aspect to a service and opening aspect. Um, also, as I reported last month, I, I met with Tammy Bainey, who is the executive director of Central Oregon Intergovernmental Council about a position on their board. And um, just this week, I applied for a recreation and tourism position that is open. That was previously held for a number of years by Tom O'Shea. He has not um, expressed interest in that. So the application actually goes to Deschutes County and um, it's appointed by the Deschutes County commissioners. And so I should be hearing back on that in the next week or so. Uh, but that'll, again, that'll give us a voice on a tri-county reg uh, tri uh, regional basis for anything that should possibly affect Sun River. Uh, or an opportunity for Sun River will have a voice. Um, I'd like to uh, intercede just for a moment and applaud that particular report item. Uh, that, in my estimation, and based on some experience, is the kind of thing that uh, presents many opportunities. And I would expect that there will be some that will be recognized by uh, General Manager Lewis. So thank you. Thank you. And um, it, it's later in the report, but but complementary to that is I've been been participating with the Sun Sun River Lapine Economic Development Board. It's a subset, a South County subset of EDCO, which is Economic Development for Central Oregon. Again, it's looking for that board is looking for um, economic development opportunities in the South County. Primarily, those are in the Lapine area in the city of Lapine, which has the in, industrial lands. Um, but still, um, there are things that happen uh, through that board, such as grant money that comes for highway improvements, things like that. So again, it's, it's just keeping an ear to what's going on uh, that could affect Sun River, either positively or negatively and having a voice. So um, we continue to meet with our cons uh, survey consultant, JD Cornnut and our work group in January that uh, for our owner survey, that survey has been sent out uh, email. So we're getting some responses. Um, once the email portion is done, we will end up sending out mailed copies to those folks that did not get those via email. Uh, I also continue, as you heard yesterday, uh, to participate with all the task force forces. Um, I think some of those will be coming to an end in the next few months. And so we're all going to be sitting here with nothing to do at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Dream on. Yeah. Um, so let's see, and as you heard yesterday, worked with Natural Resources and our fire department to come up with a plan to revise, update, and, and revise our ladder fuel reduction program. And as it was as was pointed out yesterday, and I, and I hope you all got that, is that um, our ladder fuel reduction program right now is compliant with state law. Um, and it's a special program that we have an agreement with the Oregon Department of Forestry uh, for compliance. Based program and it's looked to as a model. So what we're doing now is really not to comply for any compliance issues, but it's really looking at 
at the best practices for Sun River and really looking to update this plan so that we can make sure that Sun River is as safe as possible. And again, our plan, um, which hasn't been updated since the early 2000s, is still looked to as a model statewide for a lot of fuel reduction program. So it's us taking the, the forethought um, and, and taking action to um, make sure we have the, the latest technology and science employed in, in Sun River. Uh, let's see, flip the page. Uh, as Director Bilkey brought up yesterday, it was on the on the, the draft agenda, but it didn't make the fi for, uh, final agenda, is we've been working with our design engineer for the fir cone drainage issue that's been going on for years. Um, we're, what we're looking at is some final designs for uh, the pond, the piping, and the dry well uh, that needs to be in, uh, installed. Uh, it didn't make the 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 agenda because our, our engineer, the proposal that we got from the engineer included a lot more uh, items than what we actually needed to comply with per the settlement agreement. So, so ultimately, long story short, uh, we're gonna in March have a contract uh, with a scope of work from our engineer that's brought to you for final design for that project. Um, and it's gonna come to you because it's over $25,000. Uh, but what we're looking to do is shave off work that's not uh, necessary so we can reduce that overall dollar amount. Ultimately, we're looking at once we get that design work done over the summer, uh, we'll look at construction after the golf course closes, the North Golf Course uh, in October. So we'll have time to do that construction. Uh, I met with Debbie Baker from the SSD regarding all of the operating agreements that we have with SSD. That includes a contract that we have with the police department for rules enforcement and the bike patrol. Uh, also for our administrative assistance to SSD, which includes human resources uh, and our accounting assistance that we provide for them. Also our uh, vehicle maintenance contract that we have. So all of those, what we're looking to do is, is update those, um, change some of the language where there have been changes to some of the programs that are applicable to those contracts and bring them all back to you likely in April for uh, uh, addendums or adjustments to those and because it, we're looking at April as a joint meeting between you the board of SROA and the SSD board that's an annual meeting that we would have and if you remember we skipped that last year because April was hot and heavy with COVID and nobody knew what was going on at that time. One, one comment about that James is something that came to my attention when I was signing checks uh, earlier this week or it was either this week or last week but uh, I didn't realize, but we pay the SSD for rules enforcement. And so that's just something that, you know, we all should be aware of is that we are paying them to do our rules enforcement. So uh, <clears throat> we, we definitely can require, uh, you know, what kind of rule enforcement we want to see. It's been a, a subject of conversation that I've had over the past few months, especially since some of the rules that are that have that have come before you regarding uh, loading of watercraft, ingress egress out of the river that I've had with Corey Darling um, about the seriousness that they have to. We know that they want to educate and they want to want folks to comply, but there's at some point. Um, citations lead to greater compliance and that knowledge goes through the community. And so, so that's an ongoing conversation he and I have had. Uh, moving into- accounting. Well, let me, let me add something uh, to uh, uh, Garrett's comment. Uh, not only do we pay for that on a line item, uh, for both, we pay for both bike patrol as well as general right. enforcement. Yeah. But uh, also the sole source of SSD's revenue comes from Sun River tax base. Yeah. So it should be a major implication that, that whatever the community wants uh, that are, are objectively evolved, uh, they should be complied with and enforced. Yes. Okay. Uh, moving on to accounting. Uh, very short report there, as you heard, and you heard from Director Beenan, the December and January reports. Uh, Joe and his staff were working on the end of the year reports, as you heard, um, and primarily what they've been working on is all the maintenance fees have come in. And I think it's important to point out um, that, that Joe pointed out to the Finance Committee the other day is that um, he said that he hasn't seen so many full payments come in uh, as opposed to the 
uh, monthly payments. Um, so, so that's why we see such a large influx of cash that has come in uh, through the end of December and January. Uh, into IT, the very first section there in IT, um, <laughs> you might read it and say it looks at a security threat, but it's nothing um, that affected any of our IT system. But essentially, if any of you are familiar with Solar Winds, it is a uh, uh, program that is uh, used by by many users, I guess I should say, to install updates and backup for computers. It's used by the federal government. So if you remember back in the fall, it actually started in the spring, the federal government was talking about being hacked. Uh, there were folks that got into the solar winds uh, application and were able to hack a lot of computers. We did not have that problem, but in response to that, we changed passwords, we did manual updates and backups. And so, so that is behind us. Um, Let's see. IT was also doing, uh, in, in that same vein, in the beginning of the year, updates to our software and additional security measures. Those are always ongoing, uh, but um, a lot in the beginning of the year. Uh, let's see. Um, we completed an annual backup of all of our virtual servers. We also do a backup on a monthly basis. Uh, the monthly basis of backup, we back those up uh, to tape as well, maybe you didn't know this, but we back them up to tape and we actually put those in a safety deposit box at the First Interstate Bank here in Sun River. So we have multiple ways to back up our data. Uh, GIS, uh, we, uh, it, we continue to improve our GIS capabilities. I think Mark Smith was able to show you some of what uh, the capabilities were yesterday in his um, presentation, but really it's uh, a lot of it has been our natural resources department that's able to, to go out and do inspections in the field uh, and enter that data in uh, while they're in the field and not necessarily uh, be redundant uh, in coming back to the office and, and, and doing it all manually. Um, North Pool, again, uh, IT was working with our, our uh, public works staff to move the cameras and actually work with our contractor to do a final determination on what uh, computer equipment and technology equipment need to be installed there. So that's coming to fruition as well. Uh, into communications, uh, we had some good news with regard to advertising. It was roughly $9,000 more, almost $10,000 more uh, than what we had uh, for um, uh, last year. Um, but as Susan noted out, some of that had to do with two advertisers paying in full. But um, but we're hoping that through some of the relinquishing of the COVID restrictions and we get into the new year that we're going to see increased advertising. So that's the hope um, that will still be reported to you. And James, a lot of the wet James, do you know how much of that was um, uh, prepaid advertising versus an increase? All that. The, the it, difference it, there is the prepaid, there about no, $9,000. No increase. Okay. No increase in but it was equal to last January, which was pre-COVID. Yes. <laughs> yes, no increase, Sorry. just prepayment. Yep. Uh, in some of the website usage, um, when you look at the popular pages, um, our website continues to be growing popularity. I mean, we're getting, we get a ton of views on our web page. Um, it's a year old now, implementation of the new web page, and it's very popular. But um, the usage is typical for this time of year when you look, people look at weather, weather. tubing hill. <laughs> weather, weather, weather. <laughs> That's it. Um, and then um, under the projects, um, Susan and Linda have been really busy uh, doing, there's a lot of things other than the scene uh, that they do, such as the report that you got yesterday from the recycling uh, task force. Uh, Linda put that together and makes it um, look pre more presentable than just a black and white document. Um, also, uh, Susan attends many of the task force meetings, such as the Rural Compliance Task Force. And ultimately, she keeps track of, of all the notes of, of what we're going to end up putting together education-wise. And so uh, they also do a lot of that work. So that's something that they continually monitor. Under community development. James, could I interrupt just for a moment yeah, and, and ask that you identify the members of the IT and communications departments? I will. Uh, we have Brad Olson as uh, in IT. He's the IT manager. Jesus Mendoza, who's here. Everybody knows Jesus. 
Um, Jesus is probably one of the most popular employees at all of us. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then Susan Berger uh, is our communications director and Linda Donahue, who is a uh, communications, communications staff person. Yeah, so, so through IT and communications, we have four whole people that hold, hold us hold down the fort in those two, two departments. Yeah, I, I count that as being rather incredible. <laughs> a tendency is to think when you hear, mention department that there are an array of people. That's not the case. We have two in each of those very important positions and the level of productivity and the results that they obtain are deserving of commendation. So there. Amen. Very <laughs> much Linda's so. Still on modified maternity. <laughs> <laughs> um, so moving on to community development. Um, community development uh, in January was very similar to December. Um, roughly five to seven items per design committee meeting who meets twice a month. Uh, we're uh, in the winter, just due to the weather, as probably all of you know, it slows down some. The number of permits that actually are submitted that come in slow down. So it's a time for our staff to do final inspections and close out some permits. Um, but I do know um, just in February, this is the January report, um, they've gotten a number of calls and inquiries um, for projects that people are wanting to do here in 2021. And as we experienced in 2020, we know more people are here in Sun River, more owners, and they're looking at those improvement projects on their home. So we'll see how that pans out over the next few months once the weather gets good and people are actually start are able to start work. Um, natural resources, again, it was closing out some of our administrative functions for uh, 2021, but also um, inspections for ladder fuel reduction on, pro on individual properties has already begun. Uh, public works, uh, public works again in kind of in the winter mode. Uh, there's a lot. They, as many of you know, they do lots of uh, clearing and cleaning of the common area. So all of the rounds that were left there through the ladder fuel reduction, those were collected, brought to public works yard. Um, they were split and many uh, owners were able to collect the firewood. Uh, plowing of roads and pathways, I think they do an outstanding job, so I want to applaud them too. Uh, every day that we've had snow, you know, by midday, because of the plowing they've done and the rocks they put down, we're down to bare pavement. Um, with regard to fleet, a lot of it is just repair and taking care of our fleet. Facilities, uh, typical indoor maintenance that they're doing to all of our facilities, and other things that they do, um, we hired a position, we had a position that left back in November, so we hired a, a refill for that position. And then Mark Smith has been involved with the um, recycling and North Pool uh, projects as well. Finally, on to recreation. Uh, you heard an extensive report from Stephen Stanfield yesterday, um, and you got a written report back in January, uh, at the, or uh, I guess at the January meeting. Um, we were in closure. Since that time, um, we've had the limited openings. So again, we are, I, I guess maybe what I'd like to point out uh, is we're trying to maximize under the rules what we can provide to the owners. Um, we're trying to provide that again with the minimal staff. We're going back to essentially the staff that we had last April, May when we did our layoffs. That's the staff that we're still operating with. So all the seasonal folks from the summer are no longer here. So it's that staff that we're operating with today. So if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. James, before you go, yes. I'm not this, going. Is, this is Mike. <laughs> you, you, you gave a very quick summary there. If you'd go back up to the public works subheading yes. and then the parks and common area and tennis, and then included in that area, the last bullet is remove the old barbed wire fence along Deschutes Road and river access. So yes. would you set it's been a while since I've walked that part of the, is it right there close to the bridge? Uh, no, I mean, we're talking to where you turn on to uh, the, the river access road toward the boat launch and toward Mary McCallum Park. Okay, um, gotcha. So in, 
in that area that you go toward our boat launch, the Resorts Marina and Mary McCallum Park, in that area, and Mark was talking a little bit about this yesterday when we were talking about the Mary McCallum Park improvements, is there was just old falling down fence, barbed wire fence um, that was not needed um, for any of our uh, pastures, for example, we when we have the grazing in there, it was mm -hmm. just a falling down fence and it, you know, it, it was just an eyesore. So we were that material. Okay, I was at the wrong section of the river there. So thanks, thanks for the clarification. Hey, James, uh, for your report next week, uh, excuse me, next month or maybe April, uh, I just don't want you guys to forget uh, the campaign to um, encourage obnoxious uh, log piles. Um, okay, I know you're going to communicate that via letter with uh, at least 100 that have been identified and uh, bring us into compliance with our rules. And, you know, through this winter, our, our hope, we've seen some folks that were out of compliance um, with these big fences, but we've seen some of the, you know, grounds, we've seen those, there were three properties in particular, I know of. we've seen those, those piles split, and we see them dwindling as the winter goes on. So we're hoping that's the case, and the amount of enforcement we need to do it goes down. Well, again, I'd just like to see it on your report going forward. Uh, James, James, I have a question under public works. Um, first bullet around um, trash rounds, restroom cleaning, park checks, and all of that. I don't know if we do or if it's even possible to put a metric on how many staff hours go into that. It kind of came up as a minor matter during the recycling center task force. And, um, and I think that, uh, again, I don't know if it's possible or if we already do, but to put a dollar amount, uh, an hourly amount on uh, how much uh, Mark's staff is putting into that. Okay. Um, I think uh, Bill is referring to particularly the cleanup for the current recycling center. Is that right, Bill? Inclusive. Uh, and, and that seems to be what came up at Recycling Center Task Force. But uh, pathways, when people put their trash in the bins on the trash, uh, on the pathways, a variety of ways. Um, I think in the future it could be helpful to us, if possible, to actually put uh, a value on that to what it takes for our staff to do it. Yeah. Might, I, might I ask, why do we want to do that? Well, as it, as it relates to the Recycling Center Task Force, for example, we were talking about, well, what it costs for us to do it this way versus that way. Well, how much time do, does uh, Public Works staff actually spend cleaning up at the Recycling Center? Um, and uh, again, I don't know if it's possible, mm. um, but I could see it coming up in other forums too. As uh, for example, if Mark's responding to the community about, well, how much time really goes into that? It's a it's a point of data, I think, for uh, consideration of not doing anything with the recycling center. Yeah. How much does it cost? Uh, so, because the current center, as you well know, is uh, sometimes inadequate in terms again, of of uh, of its cleanliness. Again, James, I don't know if it's even possible, um, but it, work it, about it. you know, I mean, if, as Cycling center itself is something that would probably be easier to track than all of those other items. I mean, just you know, anecdotally, we know that it takes a lot more time in the summer just because of the number of people that are here uh, than it does this week, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but I will, I'll work with Mark to see if he can track that. One, one other question I have is with respect to <clears throat> snow removal, are, are roads prioritized above pathways? Or are they kind of done in parallel or how, how is that done? Uh, the roads are, are prioritized above pathways. You, um, but, but typically we have different staff that are doing the different tasks. Like we, we have some folks that, are, that have a CDL, for example, that can drive the large trucks and that can clear the roads. And we do the primary roads like Abbott and Beaver and then we do the lanes to that. But then we have other folks that drive the Bobcat. Um, so they can be done in tandem, but first and foremost, it's the roads. Yeah, I would, <clears throat> I would contend 
and maybe this is just me, but I would contend that the pathways should be as important, if maybe not even more important than the roads. And <clears throat> the reason for that is, is that, <clears throat> you know, you, you're in a vehicle on the road, you've got a lot more control over what you do, how fast you go, et cetera, et cetera. A pathway with uh, snow and ice is extremely hazardous. It, it is, and that's why I say, you know, we they're both done like the day after the, the, the snow, for example. So, yeah, I mean, uh, and I would say that, you know, this year, this winter, uh, my observation has been that the pathways have been better maintained uh, than what they have in the past. So I am yep. very, very much appreciative of that. And I just want to make sure that, you know, we don't, um, if, if we could put more emphasis on it, I think that'd be a good thing because I think injury on a slippery pathway is much more likely than injury on the roadway. Uh, and part of the, road, part of the reason for the roadway though, too, is it's not just for you driving down the road, it's emergency services. Is yeah, yeah, I understand, I understand. And <clears throat> there, there's a lot of factors that go into that, but um, pathways, uh, when they have got snow and ice on them are, are, can be quite treacherous. And you know, one of the reasons why a lot of us who live here in Sun River, we live here because we love to have the ability to go outside and walk along the pathways. Yep. And, and so, again, it's one of the I'll talk to Mark about it, but um, they do it the day after the snow. So uh, but typically there's only one piece of machinery that's doing that over 32 miles. Yeah. So. I mean, you know, and the other thing is, you know, as an example, I. Uh, I, I was on the road last night, uh, just driving towards the village and, you know, here on East Middle Road there, here's a guy walking alongside the road, you know, and uh, that is not a safe situation at all. Yep. Well, I think we do need to commend the staff because they, they do an excellent job of clearing those pathways. They are done. And I'm amazed, you know, when I... Yeah, yeah like I said, this, this winter, I think, has been better than uh, like last winter or the previous winter. It, it certainly has been done very well. And I just want to make sure that, you know, we keep putting emphasis on keeping the pathways clear. Okay. All right. So uh, any other comments about uh, or questions for James? Uh, seeing none, uh, we will thank you, uh, General Manager. And we'll, uh, we'll move on to committee reports. Uh, you can see in your packet under tab four, uh, there are some design committee project updates and uh, OEC, uh, Owners Enrichment Committee, some of the things they're planning to do. Uh, any questions about any of those items or uh, wish to discuss? All right. Um, uh, the next item is the Sun River Service District reports. Just an update, what's happening. Uh, last time I picked on Jackie to lead that. Uh, this time I'll pick on uh, Jared to, to lead that. And uh, uh, we'll go, uh, and then Jackie, uh, you uh, chime in on anything he has forgotten. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, uh, the report in your packet is for December. I'm not sure why it's the December report. I would think that we could have had the January report. I really can't comment on what happened in December. I wasn't part of the, the task or the SSD board at that point in time. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what's happened in January and then uh, earlier this week in our February meeting. So there's a couple things going on with the SSD. One is, is that um, Many of you may be aware is that there's a strategic planning process in place. And this has been going on for several months. Uh, it's being led by uh, or facilitated by Jim Fister. Uh, there are various different uh, teams that are participating in providing input, uh, teams uh, that include owners, homeowners here in the Sun River area. And it's actually been coming together quite nicely. And so uh, it's not completely done. They're still doing some final touches on it, uh, but it should be available in the next month or so. And so, you know, this talks about, you know, what their, what their emphasis is going to be on public safety. Uh, it talks about finances, uh, where, where they expect to see uh, revenue come from, what kind of, uh, you know, what additional resources that they're going to look towards uh, <clears throat> to enhance revenue. And, um, you know, some other longer term issues. And so um, I would say that it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's a pretty good strategic plan as I have seen it um, so far. 
Uh, the second thing that's going on right now is budget planning. And so we just started the budget planning. Fiscal year for the service district runs from July 1st through June 30th. And so we're starting to work on the 2021-2022 uh, budget, which will start in July uh, 1st, 2021. Uh, at this point in time, it's still, everything is pretty much preliminary. And so we don't have all the data, uh, but the preliminary data is pointing to relatively modest increase in expenses on the order of about two to 3%. And so, um, like I said, that isn't the final number yet, but that's what it's looking like right now. One of the issues the service district is looking at with respect to budget is, uh, do we increase the millage rate? I think we're at uh, 0.314 right now, is that correct, Jackie? I think so. Yeah, and they're talking about maybe raising it to the maximum, which is 0.341. Uh, that has not been decided yet. And uh, I, I would say that, you know, my cloudy crystal ball tells me right now that that probably won't happen. But like I said, there still is more discussion to take place at the board level about that. Related to budget, uh, probably one of the biggest items is, uh, you know, emphasis on what are we going to do about facilities? And so this does have a direct SROA in, impact. Uh, because the current facilities that the SSD uses, both the fire station and the police headquarters, uh, are SROA facilities. And so we lease that to the SSD. And the SSD is looking at, um, you know, <clears throat> their belief is that they do need a new facility. Now, when I say new facility, it may not be a totally from the ground up brand new facility but it may be a significant uh, renovation of the current fire facility. Uh, and there seems to be a, a strong belief that there would be, ad, it would be advantageous to have a public service facility where both police and fire people are housed in the same facility. And so uh, that's kind of the thinking process right now. Uh, they are in the process of looking at bringing on board uh, architects slash uh, consultants uh, who can help them, guide them through this process, come up with some uh, conceptual designs. They had some done last year by McKinsey. Uh, they're looking at having uh, some more detail put behind that uh, and try to come up with what might be uh, a good public service facility uh, going forward. Financing of that is not known at this point in time. And so, uh, you know, it could be financed uh, through, a, um, <clears throat> through a public bond. It could be financed uh, through uh, some other means, uh, maybe perhaps donations, uh, not donations, but, you know, uh, tax revenue from other sources. Uh, one of the things that I've been putting emphasis on is, is that the, the TRT transient room tax, uh, Sun River is a big generator of the TRT tax. Uh, and a lot of that TRT tax in Deschutes County is used for public safety issues. And we have not been very much of a beneficiary of those dollars so far. And so that's something that the board is looking at putting more emphasis on in getting, uh, having conversations with the county about getting uh, some of that TRT tax back into the Sun River Service District uh, to help defray some of the costs. Yes, Keith. Uh, my understanding is that the contribution of Sun River to the TRT tax revenues for Deschutes County, it's something in excess of 50%. Yes, that, that's my understanding also. And you know, right now, none of that's coming back into the SSD. And so um, I think, you know, as, as I have been emphasizing at the board meetings and the budget meetings, I says, I think we have a pretty good story. I think we have a pretty good claim to some of that. Now, you know, government revenue is always something that's in short supply and everybody wants a, you know, wants their own personal chunk of it. And so anytime somebody says, hey, I should get some of that money, somebody else is going to lose that money and they're going to fight pretty hard not to lose it. So it's, it's not a done deal, but I think we have a good argument. In the we past, when we have talked with the county commissioners, they have been open to one-time expenditures for example, the training center that was done a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. they have been uh, extremely reluctant uh, to commit to, um, say, paying staffing costs because the staffing costs are there every month 
uh, and and uh, and tend to grow in in amount. And so if if you can do uh, make progress on that the, on that issue, uh, more power to you. I, I would even buy a beer uh, as an incentive. <laughs> you, know, you know, the last couple of years I've gone with the delegation from the district to the county commissioners to present the proposed budget. They have to approve it. And the amount of reserves that the service district has accumulated, most years becomes an item of conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and I have played the song, maybe I'm not a very talented musician fiscally, but the, uh, we, you know, we need to do something with the, the physical plant here. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it's a problem just growing in size and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, between the seasonality, you know, only one month of the 12 months in the year uh, is uh, the cash flow positive. Uh, the other 11 months, uh, we're, we're living off the uh, tax revenues that have come in. So right now we've been able to hold the uh, desires of some of the people on the county committee that reviews the, the budget request uh, a bit. They, they're, they're sympathetic to part of the argument, but if we could uh, make more headway, I, uh, I would even buy two beers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of the one of the things you know, we had a conversation with Chief Moore, uh, and I think Chief Darling uh, agrees with this also. But you know, a lot of their <clears throat> a lot of their expenses, a lot of the calls on their service, go up during the summer months mm -hmm. when we have a much higher population here. Not only do we have a much higher population, but we have you know a population that is not as familiar with Sun River rules, regulations, uh, you know, fireworks and those kind of things. And so uh, that puts more, that requires a, a larger workforce to be in place to service the transient population that comes in the summertime. And that's when the tax revenue is generated, the TRT tax is generated. So I think we have a, you know, we have a natural argument. I haven't ha had the, opportunity as you have Mike to uh, make that argument so we'll see what happens yeah I think you both have very good point that uh, we we should get a larger share of our our contributions yeah. and uh, and and maybe we even uh, encourage uh, at some point a, a display of a massive amount of people showing up at a meeting yeah so you know that, that always seems to get politicians attentions yeah and I think you know with, with SROA backing it would help also. Yeah. In addition to just the SSD on its own, Clark, yep. did you do you have a comment? When we're done with this discussion, I have a, a comment. Okay, uh, we're pretty much done talking about the the public service facility. I think one of the other things I probably should mention real quick is you know, siting is an issue, and that is is if we do go ahead with a new public service facility, where will it be sited? Um, you know, one of the places that was uh, in the back of the minds of the people on the SSD was where we're talking about putting the recycling center right now. Uh, another possibility is just expanding on their existing site. And then I think James, you've been in some conversations with them about some other uh, potential sites also. Yeah, and, and I participated in those subcommittee meetings on the facilities and um, I let everybody know that uh, aside from the recycling facility, we also have our public works facility improvements. And so that just really takes up that whole area south of our administration building. And so, you know, it was basically soft pedaling that don't count on that area. You should really look at an expansion of the existing building, the fire uh, building to the west in the existing parking lot and the open gravel area there. Now that's SROA property. So it would take a negotiation with them but um, I think something, that's something that is more viable for them. But we also did, I also expressed that, that we do think that it makes sense. Uh, we have a very good working relationship with police and fire. They shouldn't look at a location outside of central Sun River where we're at, that it makes good sense for us to be in close proximity to each other. So I think that's kind of where it was narrowed down. And, and also I will chime in 
that I did express to um, that subcommittee that the best source of funds is really going to the county. The county has funds for those very reasons you were talking about, the TRT dollars generated from Sun River. Are here. Excuse me, I'm going to step out for a minute to talk with the Ben Broadband technician. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, put your mic on mute. <laughs> yeah. Take good notes. <laughs> Learn from experience. Yeah. Um, so, so that kind of covers up the facility. I don't know if you wanted to comment on that, Clark, or. Well, well my, my comment actually is on their report uh, for the December meeting. There was a considerable discussion about our, our rule change on the river access and exit. And they seem, the SSD seems to be very unhappy um, with how we're proceeding in that regard and feel yeah. that, yeah, but know, both the, not only the, the police chief, but a number of the directors commented right. on that we're not solving the problem, we're trying to enforce the uh, Yeah, well, but, but that was- But that, that was at that moment in time. Uh, yeah, okay. since with the modification, yes, the chief, the chief certainly does. Uh, and we're following his recommendation yeah. on enforcing the parking okay. issues. Okay. And, and not, and not it, anyway. It was one of the SSD uh, board members who came on the owner's forum as a homeowner right. that uh, kind of put impetus in to change the focus from getting in and out of the river to the parking that right. has yeah, picked okay. up. And, okay. So, they're, they're happy with it now. The, the other thing I'll, I'll mention real quickly is uh, both the police and fire put together their final reports. Uh, the police final report is in our board packet. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to review it, uh, this final report is uh, of the quality of any corporate annual report I have ever read. I mean, I am just absolutely amazed at the quality of the, uh, the police annual report. So. If you want to see it, I don't know who did it. I, I, I don't know if they did that internally or they had a consultant do it or whatever, but uh, they really put together a very, very good final report. The fire final report or annual report is good too, uh, but the police one is just absolutely outstanding. And so yeah. uh, I encourage people to take a look at that. Um, you know, we, we I, have one th I have one thing to add, and that is if you don't know that Gerhardt was elected to become treasurer of the Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a lucky guy. <laughs> uh, we talked about, uh, another thing we talked about was uh, goals and metrics for the coming year. And so both the police chief and fire chief are in the process of putting their goals and metrics in place for this year. Uh, Chief Darling is uh, putting a lot of emphasis on the uh, 21st Century Policing Act or policing process uh, that was put in place during the Obama administration. He believes very strongly in that. It does have a lot of emphasis on community policing and uh, you know restraint of force and things like that. And so um, that's the direction that he's going. One other thing that came up that, uh, again, will have significant SROA impact um, is uh, we had a discussion about emergency evacuation. And uh, one of the things they're thinking about is should we put in place um, quote unquote reader boards on a per circle basis that direct people towards the appropriate exit out of Sun River. Uh, and so uh, we, had a, we had a kind of interesting discussion about that. Uh, I gave them my perspective that I thought that permanent uh, reader boards at every circle would probably not be uh, looked at very positively by Sun River owners. Uh, we did to talk about perhaps mobile reader boards, that is things on a trailer that you could roll out and put them at a various different circle. There's some logistic issues associated with that, but you know, certainly uh, at least in my opinion, that would be a lot more, a lot less objectionable than actually having permanent reader boards at every circle. Yeah. Um, well, so. what, are, what, are, what are the complexity of options? Um, they, every visitor comes in by one of two roads. Uh, let's see, and they go out by one of two roads. Well, well I think and there's, I guess there's forest service roads that you can, yeah. you know. Their, their, their perspective is, is that, you know, the way you came in may not be the way that you go out. 
Okay. And so, you know, certain roads may be closed yeah. uh, because of the hazardous situation. Yeah. And so, you know, your familiar pattern as a tourist, I always come in in Cottonwood and I go down yeah. circle 11 to circle 10 and then I, I get to my right. house. It right. may not be the way that you head out. Right. Okay, I'm not sure that reader boards do anything. Uh, I think I think human beings do. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, anyway. yeah, I think that that's the current plan. But then, of course, you know, it gets into and says, okay, you know, do you have the staff available at the time to do yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. But, but anyway, so that's that's just a discussion. And, and the reason why it came up in a discussion is because there's a uh, homeland security grant that they were looking at uh, potentially applying for. So. Ah uh, yes. Okay. Anyway. Uh, and then uh, Chief Darling said that he wants to reinvigorate the neighborhood watch program. Uh, yeah. And so this is really where they, the, the police meet with uh, just local neighbors and make sure that the neighbors are watching out for each other uh, in their homes. Uh, and so he wants to kind of reinvigorate that and get that um, uh, more, <clears throat> you know, more in place here in Sun River. So. Um, and I don't know. I mean, you know, it, it, you know, I've had conversations with my neighbors and, and you know, <clears throat> the people in my neighborhood, and of course I can't speak for all neighborhoods, but the people in my neighborhood, we're always watching out for each other's home, you know, and so we know, yeah. who, we know who the permanent residents are. We know, you know, I, I even know, you know, <clears throat> for the, for the homes on my uh, street that are rented, I know which rental agencies are responsible for those homes. And so when I see a problem with their home, I give them a call and stuff like that. So, I don't know if that's consistent throughout Sun River, but certainly, you know, in the place where I live, that's um, well in place at this point in time. That's what I had, Jackie. I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that. Well, do you want to discuss the nuisance ordinance that? Uh... Yeah, I think I... that that's part of the, the registry task force. And so right. I think. Um, oh, okay. Chief Darling's the one who put it in place. And I think James, uh, that's pretty much what we're going with is what Chief Darling put in place. I have it just real quick. I that's at our legal counsel right now for review, and I'm going to be speaking with them. <coughs> we haven't set the meeting, but early this next week to go over comments they have on that. Yeah, very good. There, there, there was an interesting comment made by uh -huh. Debbie Baker. Is she she commented that she said, "Well, we didn't get quite we, what we wanted to get from the uh, Rental Registry Task Force or Rules Compliance Committee." And I push back on that a little bit because I thought we were giving them everything that they had asked for. But um, yeah. did it, she have any substance beyond that comment? Not, not really. She didn't point out any specifics, but she okay. said, you know, these were the kind of, you know, it doesn't look like it's going to come out the way that we had hoped it would come out. And I told her, I says, well, I don't know what you're looking for. But then I went through all well, the things. I, I have a comment on that too. She I think to that when it was first presented sure. about the, Name change and things. They're not even neurons now. The okay, thing somebody, where I'm upset where, where about it, but when uh, Gerhardt explained what the uh, data system that he has put in um, that does about what Debbie had wanted for the task force to have, is I think she was uh, much happier with the outcome. Okay, if I could good. As well, real quick, I had excuse that. me. I'm gonna lose my internet connection, so I'm gonna go offline, steal my neighbor's signal, and I'll be back shortly. Right. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, my conversation with Debbie on that was that that um, she believed that what the SSD was looking for when they said rental registry was a requirement of SROA for every owner that has a rental property to actually register in some form, meaning that we have a registry program that um, if you rent your property, you must sign up for, or you must register with us that you have a rental property so that we actually had more formal control. And what we've done through our rules compliance task force now is we've kind of uh, soft pedaled that a little bit. Uh, it's, it's still education and what Director Bean put together, I think we have the ability to really get at the, the issue that they want, which is the, the nuisance properties. Because as Chief Darling says, um, you know, about 90% of the issues come from 10% of the rental properties. So that, I think we're gonna achieve that on the back end without having to be heavy handed uh, to set up a formal registration fee, that type <laughs> program. 
And I, and I doubt if any heavy handedness would hold up in the court. It would be, it would be so we're, we're doing the right thing. If, if, uh, if, if further complaints come of that nature, the county government has the ability to be a government. We're an association. Yeah, and I think the other thing is, is that, you know, we also have to comply with the court of public, public acceptance, so to speak. That's right. And as I mentioned yesterday, and I, and I always try to keep emphasizing this, is that, you know, this is an informational tool that is going to be for the benefit of everyone. It's not just a punitive tool for finding out who the offenders are. This yes. is a way in which, you know, your home can be protected and you can find out more about what's going on in your home uh, because of this. Uh, so it's a benefit to everyone. That's right. And, and escalation is a, a process. It just takes time. Uh, and, and, and that's what James will be talking about next month on, on the entire program. Okay. Uh, anything else on the report? Okay. All right. So moving on to uh, point A of our agenda, um, which has to do with uh, some, some folks uh, leaving and some folks being added. As noted, uh, Ann, Ann Byers is going to be spending a little more time in California and is resigning from the design committee. She's been on that committee since the 1998. And uh, thank you so much, Ann. And uh, Randy Schneider has also decided to leave the nominating committee. Um, uh, we also have two new people, um, Kevin uh, Sony and Corey Wright, that are being uh, proposed as alternate members of the Finance Committee. Uh, Gerhard, are you familiar with either one of these? Or no, I, I don't have any personal association with either of them. Both of them have got good, strong uh, business slash financial backgrounds, and so. Um, you know, and again, as alternates, I think what we're looking for is people who are willing to participate and um, be active on the committee. And if they continue to do that, then uh, when a position opens, they would certainly be considered as a, a full-time member. Excellent. And, and Gerhard, I believe both of them attended our finance committee meeting this they, last past they Thursday. They did, yeah. yeah they oh, did. great, great. And then I should say, though, Randy Schneider has also been a, a very active participant in so many activities of Sun River, so... Thank, thank him for the, his activities on the nominating committee. Yeah, I was a little little surprised at the, <clears throat> the nature of his resignation letter. And I don't know what the story is behind there, but I was surprised that um, he felt like he was no longer, um, you know, <clears throat> comfortable being part of the, the committee. Yeah, yeah I, know. I, was, I was surprised and disappointed as well. Yeah. Because he, he's been very active in our... Um, Right. I mean, he, he's been a great contributor on a lot of different things. So Yeah. And he basically felt that he wasn't being valued, and that's very disappointing. So maybe one of us should talk to him a little more and try to better understand that. If you want somebody, I'd be happy to. He, he used to be a neighbor from Good. our previous house. Good. Clark, could you do that and uh, sure. see if there's any way, because he's a, he's a very good asset, uh, in our community and has contributed a lot of thoughts and, and participation. That'd be great. Okay, so um, we, we need to accept these resignations and we need to also appoint these individuals. So there is a motion prepared for someone to uh, provide it. Okay, I'll do it. <clears throat> I, Director Beenan, moved the board approve the resignation of Ann Byers from the design committee and Randy Schneider from the nominating committee. Furthermore, approval of the appointments of Kevin Sony and Corey Wright as alternate members of the finance committee. All right, any Second. further, oh, excuse me, Jackie, yes? Second. Okay, uh, any further um, comments before we vote? All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Uh, the motion carries unanimously. Excuse me. Yes. Off, way off subject. Has, have any of you had pixelation issues the last two weeks? No. Nope. No. No. Nope. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> are, okay. You paying, are you paying all of your Ben Broadband bill? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. 
the next uh, item is board and committee action requests. There appears to be none. So we'll move on to um, the financial transfer uh, that uh, Garrett was speaking about earlier. And that's item C in your um, packet. Is there any further discussion on this item before a motion is presented? Yeah, I'll just make a, a quick comment. You'll see that, um, you know, these are, again, <clears throat> a little bit of background. Uh, we purchase fixed assets out of our operating fund, our checking account. Uh, and then once a quarter, uh, Joe <clears throat> puts forward this uh, memo in which we reimburse the operating fund uh, from the various different reserve funds uh, that are normally paying for these capital items. And so you see uh, there's some coming out of the uh, capital reserve fund and also out of the shark reserve fund. Uh, total is about $83,000. And so um, I, I will read the motion and then we can uh, have any further discussion. Excellent. <clears throat> I, Director Beaton, move the approval of the transfer at $803,133.82 from the reserve fund to the operating fund for the 2020 fourth quarter acquisitions. Is there a second to the motion? Mobley seconds. All right. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? The motion carries unanimously. Uh, the next item is D in your uh, packet. Uh, it's a fairly routine transfer, I believe, uh, yeah, of the yeah, Sky Park. Let, let me explain this one uh, so that uh, people understand. Uh, Sky Park is a you know, kind of a sub-development here inside of Sun River. Uh, we do manage their reserve account for them. Uh, so they pay in an additional amount of money beyond just their regular assessments uh, for uh, maintenance of their assets in their part of the neighborhood. I think there's something like 21 homes or something like that in Sky Park. And so this is out by the airport and they have uh, direct access to the uh, airport runway. Uh, kind of services that SROA provides to them is uh, we plow the roads or their, their tarmac uh, in the uh, winter time. And then in the summertime when their asphalt needs any kind of repair work, uh, we have that repair work done. Again, all paid for out of our checking account. And then uh, once a quarter or once a year, I think it, Joe does this once a year. Once a year, we go back and true up uh, because we're collecting additional fees uh, <clears throat> as part of their, uh, their additional assessment, but they're also expenses. And so uh, what Joe has in his memo is that the additional fees that we collected uh, from Sky Park mounted to $17,863.83. Uh, the expenses this year were $31,266.92, uh, resulting in a deficit uh, to SROA of $13,403.09. Uh, in addition, uh, several years ago, I think it was about five years ago, uh, Mike can correct me if I'm wrong on that, uh, we loaned them uh, $40,000. Uh, they've been paying that loan back, uh, and this is the last payment on that loan. Uh, so there's a $5,162.98 uh, loan payment. So the total is, is that uh, they owe us out of their reserve fund $18,566.07. Uh, they have $40,000 in the reserve fund, so they are able to pay that off and uh, not go into debt. So that's what that's all about. It's pretty straight, as Brad mentioned, it's pretty straightforward. So I'll read the uh, motion and then if anybody has any questions, I'll answer those. Excellent. I, Director Beenan, move approval of the transfer of a deficit of $18,566.07 from the operating account to the Sky Park Reserve account to the year ending uh, December 31st, 2020. Do I have a second for that motion? I go key second it. All right, very good. So we have a motion and a second um, for the transfer at the Sky Park Reserve. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion carries unanimously. Uh, we're now, if you would move on to section E, 
Uh, this specific item refers to e-bikes. If you'll look at the um, the uh, the edition, uh, the second page of that item, uh, you'll see that we were going, we were proposing to include class two e-bikes. You can see it in red, uh, and uh, and so our motion here is. Uh, I think yesterday in the work session, we had a thorough discussion and I think uh, the consensus was to eliminate those words and class two uh, based upon all of the correspondence we had received in the discussion we had. The correspondence has been extensive in terms of uh, voting no on class two e-bikes as well as positive. Uh, I think we took a good amount of time to discuss the pros and cons as well as some other issues uh, germane to the pathways and the safety of, of pedestrians. And so unless there's further comment, I'm asking for that now, uh, we can prepare a vote to Question vote on this issue. Yes, Brad, Clark. Are we also adding back in the deletion that's there with no throttle? Ah, yes. Back along with eliminating the end class two. Well, I, I think, you know, if, if I understand it correctly, what we, we either approve this or we don't approve it. And if we don't okay. approve it, we go back to the language that exists already. Okay. Right? Uh, which, which does not include class two. It just includes class one. Is, isn't and, that correct? And it James? re-adds the with no throttle. Yeah. Okay. It is. If you reject this proposal, the language will stay exactly as it is. Yeah. Okay. And, and the language as it is today, just for my ignorance, are class one bikes approved? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Very good. So, so this is an up or down vote on this yep. issue. Yep. Okay, got it. Brad, I have a, a, a comment that I should have brought up yesterday, uh, and it's based upon the, uh, the owner input uh, and something that I found of concern that doesn't affect our vote today. Um, but a couple of things that came up to me was, it seemed that a lot of the owner, several of the owner input pieces, correspondence, talked about e-bikes belong on the roads. And I'm concerned about what that's going to mean down the road, because we already have a problem with that, with pedestrians, as mentioned earlier, uh, during winter and year rounds, probably worse in, in the warmer months, as well as, and I say this as an avid road cyclist, people kitted up uh, on their really cool colors and all of that, just riding on the roads. It's already a problem. I just want to make sure we keep in mind that, well, first of all, some of the owner input was they're already riding E2 bikes or uh, um, uh, riding on the road anyway, but there is a sentiment out there that uh, get your e-bike or whatever bike out on the, on the roads rather than on the pathways. Well, um, we have decided up until now that we're not allowing uh, pedestrians or bikes on our roads because we don't have shoulders. Uh, and therefore they're allowed under Oregon law, as I understand, to ride on pathways. We have to have an alternative methodology for yeah. pedestrians and, and bikes. Um, so, I mean, we're, we are, we have authorized then uh, e-bike, you know, initially bikes. Uh, we're saying, uh, well, we're about to say something on uh, number two e-bikes. Um, I mean, I, I don't think we're advocating in any way that, that bikes should be on the roads. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not implying that. We uh, we're, okay. we're clear on the rules and all of that, but it's already a growing problem. And yeah, well. I think a lot of our uh, owners that provided input uh, shared some attitudes about that. Yeah. No. No, that's true. That's true. You know, enforcement again. Uh, somebody brought up yesterday. I think it was Clark. Um, speed limits. You know, they might be inadequate today. That's a different issue that we should discuss if, if you'd like. Again, enforcement is very difficult in 3,300 acres. And, uh, and uh, all we can do is set standards and, and uh, for people who abuse our rules, uh, those are the ones we crack down on. But other than it's, as Gerhard said, our rules are not designed to be punitive and, and be enforced in every corner of the road. Um, so. We, we do have some pathway deficiencies, as you know, as yep. Mark has pointed out a number of times. And so, I mean, you know, hopefully we can get some of those addressed. 
Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Between two and three. People don't even know where the trail is most of the time, where the yeah, pathway and, and, and is. And along East Meadow Road, where I live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's right. That's right. I think Mark's ad Mark is conceptually addressing both of those and hopefully yeah. can make some progress. So uh, I think I think Bill, that com those comments are. We'll just have to keep watching them. All right. Yeah. Agree. Now, if if this uh, goes forward, even to a vote, we don't even have to do that. Somebody could say introduce it, and then if it doesn't receive a second, it just fails for lack of a second. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. good. God, I'm glad there's parliamentarians. You know, I never <laughs> paid any attention to any of that. But anyway, uh, so uh, do I even have a motion? Seeing no motion, no second. Uh, we'll, uh, James, you'll uh, dispose of this item. That fails for lack of a motion. Very good. Those are the right words. I'm impressed. All right, very good. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mark, for that uh, a uh, very astute city of Portland. You must have learned all of that. Uh, anyway. uh, actually, I used to, on occasion, judge high school uh, debate. Ah. <laughs> Even better. Even better. Yeah. They were all right. The rest of us. <laughs> so we're at a point in the agenda where is there any other business that you would like uh, to, to discuss at this time? All right. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if there's much to uh, discuss and to de debrief the meeting. I think it's all been pretty straightforward. And uh, I, unless somebody would like to add something, uh, did, I think, oh, go ahead. I heard did somebody. Any of, of the three people who were muted earlier, have they unmuted? And... Okay. Nope. I, I, and uh I hope we'll figure out what went wrong or try to figure out what went wrong. And B, I encourage them as we did early on to send us an email. But, uh, and some of the folks I think uh, also understand there'll be a process concerning recycling that's uh, far from completed. Yeah, plus, plus next month we're, we're meeting in person. Yeah. And so people- yeah. Exactly. Will, yeah. Exactly. The, the second question on a slightly different topic. Since yes, sir. You, since you mentioned recycling, are we putting the report that we discussed up on the on the web here at this point, or is that something that might go up later? I, 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 my understanding is up there already. Okay. I, no, this report isn't, but uh, the committee's understanding is that Susan will be getting it online this next week sometime. Okay. There were a couple of uh, small edits we've made where there's some mistakes in language or this or that. They're going to get fixed. It doesn't uh, really change the report, but unless Good. there's some other objection, the intent I think is to put it on the site in the coming days. Excellent. Thank Good you. Trans the transparency survey is on the website already. Yeah, but, but the, the recommendations in the full whole report itself that helps that everybody saw. understands the options and and can participate more fully. Yeah, and I, and we might um, point out too that Susan played a big role too in helping us. I think with some of the language and you know along hmm. with and Gary, of course, did a superb job. Yeah, uh, heading up the writing of the report. And if I can add to that to one thing is that it will be posted on our web page. Um, folks can submit uh, comments um, uh, to the board and they can come to us and we can forward them to the board before the next meeting. But there won't be any task force meetings because that was essentially the official report and recommendation of the task force to the board. So at your March meeting, you'll be requested to officially accept that report and recommendation and then take action on as to what to do. And we might point out there that the committee asks that you, um, particularly if we end up extending the six month study period that you extend the task force. That was one of their recommendations on that final page of their presentation yesterday. Okay, so uh, again, we'll, I encourage everyone to reread the entire report, to have a further active discussion, and uh, then we can see how to proceed. Did we uh, approve the fur cone contract? No, it's gonna come before you in March. Okay. Okay, is there any other issue anyone would like to bring forward? All right, I think it's time then for someone to propose a motion of adjournment. 
I don't speak move. all the time. Okay, good. Jackie. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and second to adjourn this regular meeting of the Sun River Owners Association. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> all right, the motion carries. Thank you all very much and have a continued uh, great weekend. Thank you. Yep, See you guys. Now. Thank Bye. you. Take care. You.